Hi, my name's Rod and I'm going to talk to you about the safety of HRT. It's one of the commonest questions I get asked by patients, you know, because there is so much bad news out there in the media about all sorts of things that are dangerous about hormones. But let me tell you, there is nothing that is particularly dangerous at all. There are three things that women worry about. One is the risk of blood clots, thromboembolic disease. One is the risk of heart disease. And the other is the risk of breast cancer. When I talk about risk, I'm going to talk to you about different forms of HRT. One of those will be oestrogen plus a progestogen. And that can be taken by mouth or it can be used, administered through the skin. And the other will be oestrogen only. Oestrogen only also can be administered by mouth or through the skin. And oestrogen only is the type of hormone therapy you would use if you'd had a hysterectomy. Before we talk about all the so-called risks of hormone therapy, let's just list some of the benefits that there are. First of all, nothing alleviates menopausal symptoms better than hormone therapy. There is just no doubt about that. There are any number of large clinical trials that have shown more benefit for hormone therapy in alleviating symptoms than anything else. Secondly, we have lots of evidence to show that hormone therapy will improve your bone density. Not only that, it'll reduce your risk of fracture as well. Thirdly, regarding your cardiovascular health, we have evidence to show that hormone therapy will reduce your cholesterol levels and will reduce your risk of diabetes. Every woman worries about putting on weight after the menopause and every woman does put on some weight around the middle as soon as she becomes menopausal. But hormone therapy won't make that worse. In fact, it might actually make it better. Okay, so point one, let's talk about the risk of blood clots. That's thromboembolic disease. If you use estrogen plus progestin by mouth, then your risk compared to somebody who never uses hormones will be doubled. That sounds huge, doesn't it? But it's actually one extra case per thousand women. So it's in fact very small. It's smaller than a lot of everyday risks that you'll be exposed to. It's smaller than the risk you have of dying in the next year, lying in your bed at night. So not much. And that risk can be reduced even further if you use your oestrogen and progestin through the skin. And that can be administered as a patch or a gel. Point two. This is heart disease. Now, about 15 years ago, women were told that they should all take hormones at the time of their menopause because they'd all get less heart disease. And then there was a very famous clinical trial that came out that said they'd all die if they had hormones. So what we now know is that if women use combined HRT, estrogen plus progestin, their risk of heart disease is not increased if they're within 10 years of their menopause. In fact, it's not increased if they're within 20 years of their menopause. If they use estrogen only, it appears as though they actually get cardiovascular benefit if they're within 10 years of their menopause when they start treatment. You should not use hormone therapy to prevent heart disease, but if you take hormone therapy at the time of your menopause, it will not increase your risk of heart disease. The third point I wanted to talk to you about, and probably the one that worries women most, is the risk of breast cancer. This is a very complicated picture, and I'm just going to go slowly through this with you so that you understand. The first point is that there does not appear to be any increased risk of breast cancer for women using any form of HRT until they have used it for more than five years. If you happen to be taking combined, that's oestrogen plus progestogen hormone therapy, then your risk in clinical trials anyway appears to be increased after about five years. The magnitude of that increase is still very small. It's about almost one per thousand women after five years of treatment. This is a similar sort of risk to that which you see with uh, consumption of alcohol every day, uh, with not breastfeeding, with having your first child after the age of 30. And of course, if you are overweight or obese, then your risk of getting breast cancer will still be greater than if you are of a normal weight and taking hormone therapy. So if you are taking combined HRT, that's oestrogen plus progestogen, your risk can be reduced by careful selection of the progesterone component. 
That's there to protect your uterus, that's all it's there for. And if you use a natural progesterone, or if you use didrogesterone, which is a progesterone very similar to the natural progesterone, there is very good data from studies in Europe that shows that your risk of breast cancer will not be increased, even after five years of therapy. If you've had a hysterectomy, you only need to take oestrogen. And if you're only taking oestrogen, your risk of breast cancer is not increased. Uh, in the big randomised trials, we found that there was no increase in risk after seven years of use. And in fact, with 12 year follow-up, there was a reduced risk of breast cancer for women using oestrogen only. What about stroke? We're all worried about a stroke and it has been said that hormone therapy increases the risk of stroke. This is not true for women without any underlying risk factors who are in their 50s or within 10 years of their menopause. If you do have some risk factors, then you should obviously talk to your doctor about it. But we also have evidence to show that in those circumstances, you could probably safely use a non-oral estrogen such as a patch or a gel. Some women go through the menopause with no symptoms except local uh, symptoms of oestrogen deficiency. By that I mean they could have vaginal dryness, they could have uh, discomfort with intercourse, or they could have recurrent urinary tract infections. For those women, it's appropriate to use topical oestrogen therapy. There are a variety of products available. All of these are extremely low dose. None of them require you to use a progestogen as well as them, providing you use them according to the uh, instructions that you're given. And all of those things can be used safely in the long term. I hope that's helped you to understand the concept of risk and to realise that the risks with hormones are actually very low. But there is one other point I want to discuss with you, and that is the continuation of therapy beyond five years. A lot of women, perhaps nearly 50% of women, will have some hot flushes beyond that five year period. And for them to have to stop their hormone therapy at that time is often extremely distressing. Obviously you should talk about this with your doctor so that your individual risks and benefits can be assessed. But what I've given you in this talk so far is some evidence to suggest that you can continue hormone therapy safely for longer periods of time. For example, you could use non-oral oestrogen and therefore not have an increased risk of thromboembolic disease. You could use progesterone rather than a progestogen to reduce any risk of breast cancer. Um, and you could watch your general health and your weight and other things to eliminate other risks as well. So we do not believe that women should stop hormone therapy absolutely after five years. We believe that women should be able to use hormone therapy for as long as the need is there and it's up to us, their doctors, their carers, their supporters, to make sure that they get the safest combination to continue to do so. There's one last group. There's a group of women whose menopause occurs early, before the age of 45, and sometimes prematurely before the age of 40. It is absolutely essential, if you are one of those women, that you continue to take your hormones at least until the average age of the menopause. What you have is different. I want to have a few words with you about Tibolone. Tibolone's a unique form of hormone therapy, which is available in most parts of the world. Tibolone has estrogenic and progestogenic properties, so you don't need to take a progestogen with it. There are a few features of Tibolone that do make it better for some women. One of those is that it does not increase breast density. So if your doctor's told you that you have dense breasts, or if the radiologist has told you after you've had a mammogram, it's possible that this would be a better option for you. Secondly, Tibolone does not increase the risk of thromboembolic disease. That's blood clots. It's one of the few forms of oral therapy that does not do that. And so if you are at increased risk of thromboembolic disease, this may be a better option for you. But once again, you need to talk about that risk with your doctor. Let me just summarise what we've been talking about. For most women, the benefits of hormone replacement therapy will outweigh any risks if they're initiated within 10 years of their last period or in their 50s, 
even if they're continued for about 10 years. If you have to continue therapy beyond that time, then there are ways that we can work with you to reduce your risks as much as possible. The overall risks are small and they're less than many day-to-day -day risks that we face in our everyday life. So I would like you to realise that hormone therapy is safe, that it's a very effective treatment for menopausal symptoms if you're experiencing them, and that there are ways that we can give them to you to protect you from risk as you go through your postmenopausal life. Thank you.